back to another week of Art Life. Last week we looked at my practice in a more vlogging natural style, which I loved, um, and we had some great comments back. So this week we're gonna do something similar. Um, I'm gonna be exploring the landscape, getting loads of inspiration, and then bringing it back into the studio and progressing with this new project. I'm Jessie. I've been a full-time artist for 10 years and thought it about time I start sharing my painting techniques and adventures. Subscribe to join me every week for a window into my art life. So this week there's been a real haze of kind of Indian summer light around Suffolk at the moment on the east coast of England. I've been doing a lot of quite small painterly sketches um, and by a lot I mean I've only done two but I really love them and I want to keep going with them because I just feel like there's such interesting windows into some of the landscapes that I'm looking at um, but quite gestural quite simple and I love that oversimplified loose sketch because I can do them quite fast and they're quite playful and I don't kind of uh, get too hung up on the small details. Um, we've been going a lot into nature, um, still exploring more of the studio landscapes around this part of the east coast. So we went, uh, we've been doing a lot of sunset, we've been doing a lot of sunset walks, sun, sun, I wish I could say sunrise walks but we're never up early enough. Um, but it's that light in the state of flux which I'm obsessed with at the moment. We went on this amazing walk into the heathland um, which is the kind of those beautiful bits of heather, ferns, obsessive, uh, blah, blah, blah. the ferns, also loads of Scots pine trees. I've been like really into my pine trees this week, these sort of spindly, beautiful, almost like figurative trees. And I've been hunting for the perfect one to draw and I think I found it. Um, so I'm gonna do that drawing now. Um, but let me just show you the journey we took into that landscape and just how I was reacting. I didn't bring my sketchbook again, but sometimes it's good to just be inspired and just soak it all in and then bring that back into the studio. Um, so that's kind of what we did. So let, let's show you, roll that bit of the tape. look like sentinels like they've got so much character and such a good like line um, I think that's Scots pine there's so many of them on the heat I'd love to put them into the composition that I'm working on on another project like as a side project really sap dark green particularly in this like gorgeous autumn light it makes the bark glow orange so on a bit of a mission, I want to find a lone sentinel tree that's kind of quite bare at the bottom um, with a really kind of spindly crooked, almost like a figure, um, like the way its branches are going to reach for the light. Um, so like these ones are too, like that's amazing as a tree, but I know I wouldn't be very good at painting it. I know what I'm looking for, I just need to, I need to find the tree. So it's now twilight and the way the light changed in the last five minutes is phenomenal. Um, light changes like that all day, but we only really notice it in these really special like moments of the day when light is literally shifting from light to dark. Monet was particularly fond of this. This light in a state of flux, he actually went and painted one of his amazing haystacks in the morning and then he went back and did it again at twilight. So you have two paintings, exactly the same composition, but just seeing the difference in colour palette and colour tone that he used um, in the morning and in the night, dawn and dusk, 
it's like insane it's two completely different paintings but more than that it's two completely different energies towards the painting one feels really fresh and hopeful the other one feels really relaxed it feels like it's sort of more sort of warmer like it's kind of easing into the evening um, and that's something else I'm really interested in how light a morning palette and an evening palette uh, affects painting affects the mood affects the decisions you're making when you're painting particularly if you're painting outside so last week I got this beautiful piece of Fabriano paper ready on the wall. I feel like it would be a really good exercise to just experiment with gesture and play with the sense of composition and space and do that landscape. And if it works out, maybe I could translate it into one of these um, big stretchers we've got uh, ready for more canvas painting. So let's do that now and then we can uh, talk a little bit more about what we've been doing in the week. Where we were looking at sketching trees, actually. Um, do check that video out if you haven't seen it. I think I'm quite new to painting trees again. I used to do it a lot as an art student. Um, yeah, it's quite a good episode. Oh my god, I made a mark on the floor. I made a mark on the floor. <laughs> my bloody lovely floor. It's going to get a lot worse than that over the years. This is where gestural painting gets really interesting because anyone who's seen my website or like looked at maybe some of my older, more classical painting knows that I'm a fairly okay painter and drawer. Like, but this is really loose. This is really sketchy. This is really blocky. It's kind of not, you know, some things about contemporary art is that, you know, people look at things in museums and go, oh, I could do that. Why is that? You know, it's just like a bunch of scribbles, like, it's the biggest thing about art, actually. Um, when you go to a museum or a gallery and you're looking at famous paintings and someone's like, well, I could do that. It's like, oh, no, it's more about the fact that even though you can do much finer, more figurative work, sometimes gestural, abstract, powerful, blockier painting is captures something that maybe a really fine, overworked uh, drawing or painting can't. So even though this is just a quick sketch, it's quite blocky. Anyone at home could do this. Like it's not perfect. It's just about capturing, you know, those figurative trees. Um, I like it. I think it's cool. Not everything has to be, you know, one style, more gestural, abstract, looser styles of sketching. You know, this is what my sketchbook looks like on a much smaller scale. It's quite messy. It's quite, you know, blotchy and I'm just trying to play and, and no one's looking. I mean, obviously you're looking because you're on YouTube, but the idea is that nobody ever sees it. So it doesn't matter if it's terrible. If it helps you get one step further into a piece of artwork that you're, you know, trying to do, then it's a success. So I did a big order um, for this new project of art materials. 
literally it's like Christmas when you open up an order like this. Oil paper, a lot of you ask what I've been uh, doing my oil paintings on when I'm working on paper and it's actually Arche uh, oil paper which is takes the oil really well when you um, don't want to use canvas and you want to do something a bit more experimental. Um, cold pressed fine grain oil paper from Arche as well. So that's actually going to be perfect for my new body of work. So I've ordered a bunch of stretcher bars because I already have heaps of linen. Um, I usually work on oil primed linen that I get from Russell and Chapel or Cornelison's online. Wow, okay, so I've ordered a lot of smaller um, stretchers this time, but most of these small ones will literally just be museum exhibition quality, ready-made stretchers. I used to be able to make them from scratch, but I don't unfortunately have the machinery here in the studio. The worst unboxing I've ever seen in the world. At least I didn't use my teeth this time. Oh my gosh, they've given me some uh, mediums. Okay, so we've got refined poppy seed oil and refined walnut oil. Um, I think we should do an episode where we go through uh, mediums for oil painting properly and we experiment with different ones, different kind of, you, you know, effects that they give with oil painting. I love working with walnut and poppy seed oil because um, they dry slightly differently but they are much less yellow than linseed oil. Um, oh my gosh, this is so exciting. Okay, so we're going to do an episode on mediums. Watch out for that. Um, oh my gosh, this is so... <gasps> okay, so we have warm white, cobalt teal, rose madder, sap green, cadmium yellow, Quinacridone Gold. I want to talk about this one. Raw Sienna. <gasps> Naples Yellow. Oh my God. This is such an interesting mix of colours. Now, I don't know if you can tell, but autumn is creeping up on us. Um, and I think that reflects in the colours that I'm going to be painting. Obviously, apart from Cobalt Teal, which is just like a guilty pleasure. Um, this is the colour of autumn. We can make some really beautiful autumnal paintings. Um, with this, you know, you've got that warmth of the leaves, the golden light, Quinatri um, quinacridone gold, quin gold as I call it, um, has a really beautiful um, transparency and when you add it to a little bit of warm white, um, it is liquid gold, so there's also a quin rose as well I have, maybe we could also experiment with playing with some colours, mixing some colours, maybe doing some mixing episodes um, where we just see what oil does when you blend it with different colours, warmths, transparent colours, opaque colours. So as you know I've been exploring uh, the area around my new studio looking for compositions and ideas. Um, there's loads of boat scenes around here and I've been trying to draw boats and I'm really bad at it. Um, I actually eliminated all the boats that I was trying to draw so I think that will be another episode me trying to reacquaint myself with drawing straight lines and boats and actually getting really good at it. So look out for that episode when I get round to it. So what I came to the conclusion of was I'm mostly interested in this September Indian summer light we have, this hazy dreamy quality over all the water, all the kind of big heaths we've got around this sort of east coast landscape. Um, the simplicity as well starting a new project I was over complicating it for myself I was getting really stressed out like I should have this really well formed concept to like present on art life and to galleries and to my buyers um, and I was overwhelming myself and then ended up kind of just burying my head in the sand um, or playing with the puppy which is actually what I was doing um, so I arrived at this idea that simplicity is the big best beginning for this painting practice, this, this new painting project. Um, and this is what I've come up with. This is the prototype of this, this new body of work. It's mainly using uh, transparent oxide and terra verde, um, which is actually kind of terra verde here, mixed with some um, king's blue light. And then the transparent oxide, when you mix it with zinc white, goes a really kind of creamy autumnal um, brown, which I love. Um, again, Michael Harding, you cannot go wrong with a bit of Michael Harding. Very well loved tubes here. 
Um, so how this then was looking was the smallest bit of white, it was making these really soft greens, these layers, but also creating a really clean box within some of this paper that I've just ordered. Um, I don't need to fill all of the paper. I think that was my problem. I felt like I had to eliminate all of the white that I was um, kind of working with and only have colour. So now I feel like actually allowing white space to frame a drawing or a study or a painterly study is actually really beautiful and sensitive. I think I want this body of work to be quite sensitive. So then I uh, did an underpainting for a bigger piece. I'll work in tandem. So I'm always working on a few things at once because uh, then you never, if you get bored of something, you've got something else to turn to. Um, but again, you can see the influence of colours with these kind of very muddy, muddy greens. Um, so this is just the underpainting. Normally I would work with raw umbers for the underpainting, basically doing a bowl ground. So you basically prime away the white. I chose to do that basically with green this time because I never work with green and I thought it would be a really nice change of, of pace for me to start to use more richer colours that I'm seeing in the landscape now but the one common thread of it will be this kind of really hazy misty light so we'll be doing more of that this week. So another thing that's on the to-do list for Art Life this week um, I found some old paintings from like eight years ago uh, really experimental, quite thin 60 by 110 uh, stretchers. Again, they're from Russell and Chapel, so they are so beautifully made. Um, I was going to paint over them, reprime over the canvases, but artists in history have done this a lot, where you just, canvas was really expensive, so they would constantly rework, overwork beautiful paintings to anyone else. But, yeah, you know, I mean, you can x-ray most classical paintings, Da Vinci was famous for it, and you see three or four paintings underneath. Um, there's actually about two paintings underneath these paintings already, which is why I'm ready to just restretch them again because the texture and impasto starts to become really hard to paint over. Um, the fat of the oil as well makes it quite difficult for really delicate painting to stick. Um, so yeah, we're going to restretch these um, and maybe I'll go into some little bits of fun facts about artists in history who have painted over works, painted on front and side of panels. Sometimes when you look behind a uh, really exquisite um, panel painting, there's sketches that the artist did on the back and often the back of a painting is more interesting than the front. So that's something we could definitely talk about as well. So these autumn colours are going to be absolutely perfect um, to translate into a bigger body of work. Already just with this first piece, I think that the choice of colours is going to be really like hypnotising and almost like an elemental landscape. I love that word, elemental. I actually did a time lapse of the, that this morning, so let me just play that for you now and then you can just see a little bit of how I was putting it together. The way a painting like that changes, I find so interesting. So yeah, let's roll that little time lapse. <laughs> Uh, for the autumn colours and I was really excited and I don't think I uh, went actually through the colours um, why I chose them. So the sap green um, with terra verde, which I already have, uh, the genuine Naples yellow, rose madder and quin gold. These are going to be for me the colours of this painting. The Indian summer, I might do a little bit of king's blue just to warm it up when it comes to the kind of like hint of summer in the sky. But I just thought getting some autumn colours, some rich greens, some really ripe colours, it's like nature's last brilliant show of vibrancy before winter. So I think we're in for a few months of just glorious landscapes around here. Um, so these colours are going to set me up for the next few months. And as I keep painting, I'll keep referring to the colours I'm using. Um, so if anyone is interested in um, a particular kind of uh, warmth it, when they're using their oil colours they want to like get that warm rich colour tone of autumn I'll list everything I'm using um, but I'll, ke I'll keep doing this one I think it's very soft at the moment again you can just see that rose madder there's a little bit of transparent oxide red there um, with a tiny bit of warm white and it just makes it like this really rich peach um, and then all the terra green and like I'm going to add some sap now 
Um, so very exciting for this one. And then when I feel like I've hit a, a wall with it, I'll switch over to start doing some of the sketching and then the tree studies that we saw on that amazing walk. Um, and that's kind of how I work. I just go from this project to that one, to this one, to that one. And then I get too excited and I don't know what to do first. And I just sit here for ages. Um, okay, so I'll get started on this one. Before I start the time lapse, I just want to say that while I'm painting, I'll be keeping my brushes um, kind of quite dry uh, using just a rag. I don't use turpentine anymore, so they don't become terpsy, terpsy rags and then they smell and you have to dispose of them really carefully because they, they become hazardous. Um, so I just keep my brushes as dry as possible when I'm painting because that means um, the colours don't get too murky. If you have a really wet heavy paintbrush full of paint i mean it's amazing but very quickly you can lose the kind of nuance of what you're doing and it can get a bit kind of gray so i'm going to keep all of my paintbrushes quite dry constantly using the rag um it's a really good tip So it was quite an exciting week as well because we've got a competition in the works. Why? Uh, we, well, I'm going to tell you why. Uh, I'm actually I'm going to tell you why in a beautiful landscape. So roll the tape. So we're on a walk along the beach. As you can see, it's this really beautiful day. And what's made it even more beautiful is that we just found out that we've hit 1,000 subscribers on Art Life. Yay! So thank you everybody who's subscribed. Um, you guys are amazing and what we're going to do to sort of thank you for watching and supporting this channel. So to celebrate 1000 subscribers I'm going to give a giveaway of a small drawing to say thank you. Um, the main things to enter you in for this is that you are subscribed to my channel, you have the little bell icon up for notifications when we release a video and you're also following my Instagram at Jess Oliver Art. Now if you have all of these three things you are in with a chance to win so before next week one of you thousand people should find out who's got a little artwork coming your way even if you live in New Zealand I will get it to you somehow just be patient with me uh, but just to say thank you for um, following this art life journey. So thank you so much for watching this week's episode of Art Life. Please tune in every week, every Monday for new updates on my painting practice. Um, and yeah, every week we'll be releasing new content. Also, if you can't wait until Monday, all week on Instagram at Jess Oliver Art, I'm releasing updates on my stories and, and new posts, information about my work. So please do follow me on Instagram if you can't wait until Monday. Also, we've done quite a few videos now. If there's any you've missed, please go back and watch them. Um, and again we love to hear your comments so always do leave a comment if you feel like it uh, don't forget to like and subscribe and I will see you next week